This is going to be fun. I'm really curious to see how Daryl Bevel handles this. This is a big week for Daryl Bevel. It's a very big week. He's got, he's got his hands full. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. And in today's video, we are diving into the offensive side of things for the Detroit Lions, heading into this Atlanta Falcons matchup. This is the offensive game plan. So let's get it started. No, I got a shout out, though, to the uh, man, because it was actually the first time I went live on YouTube. And, uh, you know, guys don't know, Dosa D, uh, he put out a lot of good content for the Detroit Lions. Welcome, everybody, to another video. Glad you guys are here. And, yes, we're diving into the offensive game plan for the Lions. This video may be a little bit shorter than the defensive side of the ball, but we still do have a pretty packed show for you guys today, and we still have the film to look at at the end of the video. But first, we're going to start off with the numbers, and I'm going to go through the key players, and I'm going to go through what I saw, and then we'll jump into the film, okay? So that, that's kind of how this is going to roll. But before we get into any of that... This morning, well, actually probably not this morning, but today, the Minnesota Vikings traded away Yannick Ngakwe. I don't know if I'm saying his name right, but it's okay because I don't have to worry about it anymore to the Baltimore Ravens. And I think the Ravens signed Des Bryant, but don't quote me on that. I think so. But either way, the Ravens are making a big push. Obviously, they want to, you know, make a Super Bowl push this year. I don't blame them. They're a good team. So, you know, why not make the effort for it? But Yannick is no longer in Minnesota, which was like a big move when they brought him in because their defensive line was kind of already, you know, defensive line was kind of already missing some pieces and they've already lost a few players. So they really needed Yannick and Yannick has been a huge part of them getting pressure. I mean, he's had like half the pressures for that Minnesota Vikings team. Now that he is out of there, that is a big loss. It clearly looks like they are pretty much tanking or giving up on the season at this point, And they're going to look to see younger guys and, you know, guys that they believe is part of their future. But Yannick apparently isn't. So wow. Wow. I mean, he has not been there long in Minnesota, just about what, seven games and he is already gone. So that is, that's pretty big for the NFC North. But for the Detroit Lions, we are focused on this Atlanta Falcons game. And yesterday we talked about the defensive side of things. Not going to be a super easy matchup for the Lions defense. I mean, the Falcons can put up some points, but we talked about how the Lions can slow them down. However, in today's video, we're going to be talking about how the Lions can put up some points, how the Lions can light some fire in this game. What does that even mean? I have no idea. But how the Lions can go off offensively, right? That's what we're going to be talking about in today's game, which ultimately will lead to a win because you guys know me. I don't care how ugly it is as long as we win the football game. So we're going to go through the numbers first, then we'll go to the key players, and then we'll dive into the film. Let's just touch on some numbers first and kind of make sense of them more. So let's get into it. So the rushing defense is actually pretty darn good. I mean, that's kind of like the strong suit of their defensive side of the ball. Now, they did just, you know, get rid of their head coach. They just fired their head coach in a Dan Quinn, and now they have a new head coach who's their interim head coach who may not be the future, but... It seemed like they played with maybe a little bit more juice against the Minnesota Vikings, but I'm going to be honest, I think the Vikings played right into their hands. Just some of the play calling and also, you know, three turnovers in the first half, that's that's not good. That's, that's not going to help, and Kirk Cousins couldn't lead them to a comeback as the Falcons were able to continue to put on some points. But the rushing defense is pretty good. They're 11th in the league, allowing 4.1 yards per carry and only uh, 97.2 yards per game, which is 5th in the league. Like, that's, that's, that's pretty darn good. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that at all. So the run defense is pretty good, but this is the pass defense that everybody looks at statistically and says this is where teams have to attack because the rankings are, well, let's, let's be honest here, they're awful. They are allowing a 71.7% completion percentage, which is 30th. Uh, they're allowing 2,012 yards so far. Now, keep in mind, right, they haven't had their bye week, but 2,012 yards last in the league, last in the league at touchdowns with 18, middle of the pack with interceptions with eight, but a couple of those came last week against Minnesota. Uh, 8.6 yards per attempt, which is last, 114.1 pass rating, which is last, eight sacks, which is 27th, and uh, they have allowed the most passing attempts. So yeah, that, that doesn't look super good. Now, a lot of these numbers, though, are a little bit inflated. One, because again, they haven't had their bye week. And two, because teams have been playing down with Atlanta and Atlanta has been putting up some points. Like the Dallas Cowboys game, they were down by, you know, multiple scores in the fourth quarter, so they had to pass the ball a lot. Minnesota, they had to pass the ball a lot in that game because, you know, they were just trying to come back. So some of these numbers are skewed a little bit. Okay, now there is a couple of stats, though, that I just want to make sure that you guys keep in your mind as we go through the film, okay? There's two stats. The first one is them on third downs. They are 13th in the league defensively, 13th in the league above average, allowing only a 41% conversion rate on third downs. It's pretty darn good. And they also blitz about 30% of the time. Keep those two numbers in your head, okay? Because when we get into this film and I start talking about, you know, the underneath passes and you don't want to get in third and long and things like that, that's where that will come back to play in, okay? Because even though their pass defense statistically doesn't look good, the third down defense is huge. It's, it's very big, okay? So get back to it. Also, Chicago Bears game, right? You know, Chicago, they scored 20 points in that fourth quarter with Nick Foles. It was Trubisky all game. Then Foles comes in and there's nothing to lose. He's just taking shots down the field. So some of these numbers like yards per attempt to me, passing attempts, those are a little bit skewed yards. But 
their pass defense still isn't very good. However, it's a very, how do I say, tricky, tricky. It's, it's a tricky defense that we're going to get into on the film. But they have some really, really big weapons. And the way they do things defensively is really confusing. And they disguise a lot of things well. And again, like I said, they may be playing with a little bit more juice, especially now after their first win. They have won against some really good quarterbacks so far this season, like Russell Wilson, Dak Prescott. Well, Chicago, they went against Trubisky. But then Nick Foles came in and they allowed the comeback. Green Bay, Aaron Rodgers, Teddy Bridgewater, you know, Kirk Cousins. They've, they've played against some solid quarterbacks so far. Let's dive into the key players of this game. And then we'll get into the film and i'll kind of show you why more there are even more of key players in this game but let's dive into them so the first one as you guys can, can see i have just simply jared wrote up there grady jarrett this guy is a monster grady jarrett is an absolute problem he was a problem last year he's one of the top defensive linemen when it comes to pff and this year the guy is a problem and it's not just metrics and stats that show you that the eye test shows you that this dude is a monster and he's not only like a guy that helps you in the pass rush but he also gives you a lot in run defense i mean he does both there's no liability anywhere he's going to go on the field and he's going to make plays. And he's someone that you just have to have an eye out for no matter what. Matthew Stafford said their defensive line was pretty good when he talked about it in their uh, in, a, in a press conference this week. But when you watch Grady Jarrett, I mean, he is a heart of this defense and they run behind him, right? They run on Grady Jarrett. And this dude is an absolute monster. When it comes to run defense, there's certain ways that you can try to push him out of the play because otherwise he will dominate the offensive line. And if it's pass defense, you can bring four rushers and he's usually the guy that's getting the sacks. He's just really good. I mean, he's just really good everywhere. So he's the guy to keep an eye on. And he's so good that another key player is Frank Ragnow and the guards for the Lions. Specifically, Frank Ragnow, I went with here, but both guards, we don't know who's going to start at guard. But the interior of this offensive line, they're going to have the work cut out for them. There is no doubt. They're going to have a lot of work cut out for them in the run game and the pass game. Now, so far, like we have seen that the Lions have the best run blocking unit in the league. So that's awesome. That should help. But it's just going to be a very tough challenge. I mean, he on his own is just... He's not Aaron Donald level, but he's like, okay, this dude's a problem. Like, that, that's, that's what he is. Next player to look out for, AP, Adrian Peterson. Now, this is interesting. People are probably thinking, wait, Adrian Peterson, did you just see Swift last game? I did. I did. And we'll get to the film why I put Adrian Peterson. Now, Lions are going to ride that hot hand. I expect him to do that. Everybody's going to get involved. And it could be Swift's day. But I do see the Lions starting off with Peterson in this game, just simply from what I've seen by the film and where their weaknesses seem to be defensively against the run. And I think Adrian Peterson is going to be a huge part of the game plan. And finally, TJ Hawkinson and Jesse James. These tight ends are very tough to match up with. Really good ones, especially in TJ Hawkinson. Jesse James hasn't meant too bad when it comes to the receiving game. And tight ends so far this year have done really, really well against this Atlanta Falcons defense. If you look at them statistically, uh, Schultz had nine receptions for 88 yards. Graham, six receptions, 60 yards. Tanyan, six receptions, 90 plus yards. Rudolph, three receptions, 40 plus yards. Greg Olson had a solid game. It's all about tight ends, man. Tight ends have really done well against the Atlanta Falcons. And again, we'll dive into that once we get into the film side of things. So let's hop over there right now and we'll discuss more about this game plan. Let's go. Here we are. We are back with the film side of things. We're going to be diving into this film a little bit here. Just some of my major takeaways from this Atlanta Falcons is defense. And again, like I said, we try to look at, you know, things that come up, things that repeat, things like that. So that's what we're going to take a look at in today's video. And I try to find where other teams have success and where they don't have success when it comes to the offensive side of things, right? What kind of plays show up over and over that teams are doing well with and plays show up over and over where it's like, okay, that's not working. Or a play that seems to be in the game plan for multiple teams every single week when they play the Atlanta Falcons, you know, certain things like that. So first we're going to start off with the run game because I feel like that's where you have to start, right? Can you have a run game established? Like we said, the Lions have the best run blocking unit. They don't have the best rushing in the league and we're hoping that our running backs do better there. It could be more Swift involved. I think Peterson's going to be very involved in this game as well. But again, if Swift's going, it's going to be Swift. Like if Swift's rolling, it's going to be Andre Swift. And I got no problem with that. I'm just thinking that it's going to be some Peterson just based on what we're about to see. But the run game is super important. I know that run defense looks good, but I feel like you have to keep a balance here. If you become one-dimensional against Atlanta, there's going to be some problems because I feel like Atlanta feeds off of you becoming one-dimensional to a very, very high level. They, they are not afraid of blitz. They play a lot of linebackers. They play a lot of speed on the field. And if you get into obvious passing downs, there's going to be some problems. And again, the run defense isn't bad, which would make you kind of surprised. Like, man, how do they have the speed and the run defense good? Well, one big name, Grady Jarrett, we touched on. That guy is just an absolute baller. And two, that speed when you get to the outside, when you try to run things to the outside, really is used to their advantage because they're pretty fast, they swarm up, they make tackles, and they don't allow you to break many plays to the outside. However, where I see success is rushing the football to the interior of this defense. 
if you can keep Grady Jarrett out of the play. If you can get by Jarrett and you can keep him out of the play and he's not disrupting and throwing someone to the ground and making the play in the backfield, all of a sudden in the interior, you're going to be able to run. Running backs are running through the secondary players. Like you got some secondaries, you got some smaller linebackers. Running backs run through them. That's where you have a lot of success. Your offensive line getting down the field, running behind those guys. The linebackers don't want to deal with that. So if you can get downfield, all of a sudden, I think running in between the tackles, running inside is where a lot of the success comes from. So that's what we're going to take a look at here first is where I feel like you have the most success rushing the football. All right. So we're going to start off with the Green Bay Packers. We're going to look at multiple games here. So here we go. You're going to see a lot of motions. Now I'm going to stop right here because I want to, I want to show you guys that you're going to see a lot of motions. Uh, you see here, you see tight ends and wide receivers motion a lot against this team. And you know, a lot of teams just have that in their offensive arsenal. They like to do motions but they tell a lot of the story against the Atlanta Falcons. When you motion receivers and tight ends, it tells a lot of story. If you motion tight ends around, usually the defensive line shifts with it. Motion receivers, you're going to see linebackers shift. You know, depending on how linebackers shift, it can tell whether or not it's zone or man. They seem to play a lot more zone defense than man-to-man -man defense. So motions are super important, and they're actually very effective against this team and trying to kind of run off linebackers, especially when you're trying to run the football. So here's the first play. They have the motion here, and it's a little bit of a stretch blocking concept, I think, here. And that's super important. And I think that's something that the Lions are going to look to do. We know teams do it against us. And the reason that this seems to be super successful is because it helps take this guy out of the play. When you run straight power, Grady Jarrett usually wins that battle. Now, if you can do it without having to, and you could take Jarrett out of the game and Frank and those guards do their thing, like we've seen so far this year in run blocking, that's awesome. Do it. Because I think that's where the success is going to come from. But a lot of times, it forces you to go to stretch run plays. So, statistically, they're good against the run. That's where I see the success come into play here. Here you're going to see a nice little cutback. You see a big gain. And this is interesting. I want to point this out really quickly. Two running back sets. I don't believe this is a running back. But you're going to see some two running back sets here. This is something that the Packers have done. I also saw the Dallas Cowboys do it as well. So, I'm just, I'm just saying, obviously, they have Pollard and they have Zeke Elliott. I'm just pointing it out that maybe this is something that we see potentially against this team. I know someone messaged me and was like, hey, you know, maybe we see multiple running back sets like three i don't know if we'll see three but i could definitely see two and uh you know that's what we've seen a couple of teams do against this atlanta falcons defense but here we go we see the motion again i want to show you this play again this is another run to the inside they pull the guard this time and it creates uh, a big hole for the run for the running back this is another way to do it if you can uh, pull a guard you know again i think it's just a lot of power there's just a lot of linebackers in here and i think you win with strength you win with strength against this team not speed their advantage against the run is speed your advantage is strength all right that's how they play that's by person simply simply just by the personnel packages they put up here so your strength i know the quality isn't the best on this one i don't know why the quality came out so whack on this one but that's where i feel the advantage is the strength right so here we go again they're gonna do another zone concept and boom you just run hard you get a couple of yards there not the best run but you get a couple of yards there back to the green bay packers here and i actually have multiple clips that i just want to show you of them running in between the tackles and that that's where i feel like again you're just i mean it's just a you know just power right you just have more strength on the field again Grady Jarrett, man he just runs right past the offensive lineman it's a problem rushing to the outside they're going to swarm to it so if you don't hit that edge fast all of a sudden the play is going to be killed so they're going to try to get this edge fast but the problem here is Grady Jarrett blows up just blows up the play and he goes right by the offensive lineman right off the snap the running back doesn't even have the ball yet and he's already in the backfield gets the hands on him just slows it up a little bit and all of a sudden you just see them you know just look at this oh whoa 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 boom Look at them swarm to the ball. They just swarm. They have the speed defensively, and they make a play in the back end. And that's that's the problem. Here we go. We get a nice little uh, toss play by Seattle here, and then just look at the defender swarm to it. I mean, you get the secondary who does a great job of coming down and making a play on the football. You know, that's what you're always looking for as the secondary guys. But you're just going to get the pursuit. I mean, the pursuit of everybody. You're getting a hand here. You know, you're getting Jared who's getting in pursuit here, and it's just they take it away, right? They close that off really quickly. And I just I think you running to the outside is playing to their strengths unless you can get a quick hitter. If you can get a quick hitter then all of a sudden it's a different story. But if it's kind of a toss, if it's a long, if it's a slow play, I just don't see a lot of success coming from that. And that's not what I like from what I've seen to, to do against this Atlanta Falcons defense. I just think that's what they, they do really well is they have a lot of speed. So you're going to see back in the inside, another inside handoff, just Zeke Elliott there. I mean, it's just, it's just power. We stop right here. They kind of, double triple team Grady Jarrett here they're just kind of taking him out of the play and if you can force him out of the play you're going to have success because that is their like like that's their boulder in the inside that is their guy so you take him out of the play you're going to have success rushing in between in between the tackles it's just the focus of getting him out of the play here you're going to see another zone stretch right they're going to try to you know use the zone to kind of push him out of the play don't let it be straight up because he'll win that battle but you get him out of the play all of a sudden you see the cutback lane and boom 
it's a good game, right? That's that's just that's what I've seen. That's why I want to show you tons of examples here, multiple teams. You see from the film, this is gonna be fun. I'm really curious to see how Daryl Bevel handles this. This is a big week for Daryl Bevel. It's a very big week. He's got he's got his it allows you because of the run formation you're doing to make it work anyways. Uh, so look at this one. Okay, now here's another one where they go to the outside. This is why I don't love runs to the outside against this team. It's just too much speed. So right here, you know, the speed's gonna be there. The slide backer's gonna crash over. But the problem, once again, Jared, look at this play. Look how fast Jared just blows this play up. Watch this. Oh, this is the last play, but the next play, watch this. Ready, Jared, watch this. Boom, one, two, got it. He's already by him. He is by him before the running back even gets the handoff, and he disrupts it, forces it back out. So it takes Elliott a couple seconds. He's hopping around a little bit, and boom, they collapse it. It's over. Rushing to the outside, it can work if you get there quick, but man, it's just all about blocking Jared. Now, if Frank Ragnow, if Jonah, if, you know, uh, uh, Joe Daw, they can, you know, do well against him and they don't need to do all this stuff to make sure that, and they kind of take him out of the game, the Lions are going to have a ton of success and it's important that you stay on the ground. Don't go out of your game plan. Daryl Bubba wants to run the ball. Don't become one-dimensional. The Vikings, they came into this game with a weird mindset and the turnovers killed them, but I felt like their mindset was, we're going to throw the ball because they're not good against the pass. And Kirk Cousins threw a couple of interceptions. All of a sudden, you're down. You know, three interceptions is inexcusable. You can come in with the mindset to pass, but you throw three interceptions, it's over. But stick to the game plan. Because if you get in situations where you're passing early, which I don't think their pass defense is awful. I think some of it is inflated. But they're going to play to their strengths because their strengths is using a lot of linebackers. So they don't even have to blitz and they can get pressure. They like to drop seven in a coverage on early downs. But then you get in those third and third and long situations. If they get you there with a lot of sacks and they get you in third and long, look at this. I mean, just power running. They get you in third and long though all of a sudden you're in trouble because now there's where they like to blitz they blitz about 30 percent of the time they can drop seven and you know use their defensive line and their defensive line is good enough to get pressure on their own but they can get pressure i think this is the first time you're going to see here you know they just they get some pressure this is like a third and nine for dak prescott and it's incomplete uh, so now we move on to the Seattle side of things. I'm just showing you multiple examples from different teams. This time, it's only a four-man rush. You can see, again, look at Grady Jarrett. They run a little bit of a stunt between these two defensive linemen here. They run a little bit of stunt. Yeah, he pops the side, and Jarrett's free. And all of a sudden, he gets there, gets a sack on Russell Wilson. That's a mobile quarterback, right? Great quarterback. But if you have the defense fund that they do, they can drop seven. And, you know, they can play back. They have some speed here. You can see the speed from the linebacker, you know, as he comes inside. Kind of collapses the pocket. And, uh, you know, they drop seven. So there's a lot of guys in the back end. They force him to hold the ball too long. That's basically a covered sack. Jared eventually gets there. It's a sack. You don't want to get in third and longs against this team. This is a team that lives off a of third and long. You don't want to get there. Kind of like the Packers, you don't want to get behind the chains. Here's Dak Prescott. You know, he's sacked. He ends up actually fumbling here. That's not where you want to be. Now, how do you counter this? Well, you do it with a lot of screens. And why do receiver screens running back screens? I love running back screens. They haven't been the best, I would say, so far this year, but this is the team that I've seen everybody do it against multiple times. Everybody against the Falcons runs running back screens, and they do it to kind of slow down that pass rush, right? Kind of give you the threat that, hey, you're going to have to hold up. Just try to slow it down a little bit from pinning their ears back, especially on third long. If you get in second long or third long situation, screens, okay? I know it sounds crazy. You don't always want to do that. These are what teams like to do against this team. So here again, you kind of just let the rush get there, and all of a sudden you have Zeke Elliott who just hops out, you know, and it's a big play down the field. Screens are big. Screens are huge against this team. And I think we're going to see a lot of that for the Detroit Lions here. You see another motion here. They get the defense to shift. It's Zeke Elliott. They do it. They did it multiple times. Seattle did it a few times. Packers did it a few times. Here's a nice different way to do a little bit of a screen. This one cut off kind of quick. But this one's just kind of out, outside. They write this is a quick hitter. It's a quick hitter outside, boom, and you're just getting these blockers up ahead, and uh, he picks up a nice gain on the play. And you're also going to see some wide receiver ones as well. This one actually goes for 19 yards and a touchdown. This was on first down they even did this one. That was the first down play. So you can you can do it whenever, honestly, but here you go. Here's another way to do it. Packers go with the quick wide receiver screen. We saw that last week. This is actually through the running back, but we could do a wide receiver screen with Jamal Agnew. If you saw that last week, I think that's where you could see Agnew getting involved a little bit. So that would be nice. Now, the next player person, the reason I said Hawkinson and James, I told you the stats. Now, it seems like they struggle to match up with tight ends. And I think a lot of it's because they have so many linebackers, but they're mismatching size. They play a lot of zone. And over the middle is where tight ends are usually finding holes in this defense, right? They just sit in the defense and the quarterbacks go there. And they force you to do a lot of things underneath. They force you to make a lot of passes underneath. And I think the yards per attempt is inflated because the teams are down. They're taking shots then. But there's a lot of underneath passes against this team. There's not a lot of shots that are in the air 
nine, 10 yards. A lot of them are underneath passes that may go for something after the catch to tight ends to running backs out of the backfield. A lot of things are forced underneath because they'll bring four and drop seven. And then all of a sudden they'll mix in a blitz when they get you in third down and they have so much speed, it, it messes you up. They do a very good job of mixing that. But the problem here is they're doing a lot of things underneath. And this is where you're going to have success in the passing attack underneath, underneath tight ends. They eat. Tight ends absolutely eat against, against the Atlanta Falcons. Every team you watch so far, you know, that's played them pretty much. They, they had really a lot of success uh, with their tight ends. There you're going to see a motion. I think this is actually going to be a outside play. Yep. This is where you're going to see the outside play over to the tight end. And every team did it. Every team used, used their tight ends. Here we go over the middle. Tight end touchdown. That that's where the success comes from, man. I I think tight ends are going to be huge in this game. I think we may have Hawk, see Hawk have his best game. At least Hawk and James together may have their best game. Here's an out route. They notice this man to man defense, right? They bring the motion pre snap. It utilizes the size here. So you just get a simple little motion. Boom. They see the linebacker shift over. They see him calling it out. Russell Wilson realizes what's going on defensively. And all of a sudden, boom, you get a one on one. You get your tight end out there. He's going to make the play. So tight ends are going to be very big in this game. And I think they're going to force you to make a lot of underneath passes, so you have to take them. All right, here's another one. Don't let the don't let it, the stats fool you to where okay, yeah, look, it's going to be all about taking shots. Now this is interesting. The play action bootleg that works at times. Now the, I like the way the Cowboys did the play action bootleg. The way they set this up is because what they did was actually let me see if I can get my circle. They put their 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 speedy receiver CD Lamb kind of in a slot here, and they drug him all the way across the play, which I like. They drug him across the play, and uh, you know he had the bootleg out here, and he got the pass. But what they do well, what they do well is actually what they'll do well. And they did it against Minnesota and Seattle is they will actually bring a blitz for up to the play action bootleg side. So if they realize it and he's coming around, they'll blitz this side and it'll be right in his face really quickly. We'll see one example of that, but there's also example against the Vikings early in the game where they try to do it. They went for no yards. That time they weren't able to get there. I like it because Lamb and his speed, but here's one example. Boom, it's just blown up and they're ready for that. So the bootleg may not be there as much. They're a team that's honestly built to play pretty well against our strengths. Our strengths, the team is taking shots, letting Stafford air it out, being a run heavy team, right? I formation, play action, play action, boot. They're a team that's built to slow down our offense. Like, I feel like they have a really good matchup here against our offense. So we may have to adjust a few things that we do. We have to be willing to take underneath routes. Stafford has to be willing to take underneath to the tight ends, to the running backs, take shots when they're there. I have no problem ever with taking shots with our weapons. I mean, you're just, you have mismatch in size, so do it, especially with Galladay. No one can really match up with him. But they have a good front four, like Stafford said. So don't be afraid to get the ball off your hands kind of quick, underneath routes. And when it comes to rushing football, use the power. If it's boring, it's okay. Own time possession. Keep your defense off the field. Don't turn the ball over. The Dallas Cowboys turn the ball over multiple times fumbles. The Vikings turn the ball over three times Kirk Cousins interceptions. Don't do that. Stick to your game plan, but don't be afraid to run the football, run the stretch runs. The biggest focus is take Grady Jarrett out of the game and then don't be afraid to take underneath shots, okay? And loosen up the defense like that. Even if it may be a little slow paced, do it, okay? That'll open up things downfield later in the game, but don't be afraid to take underneath shots because that's what they're going to give you when they drop to zone. And if you get in a second or third long, don't be afraid to go to screens because that's where you're going to get the all defense where they have their ears pinned back. They're like, let's get to the quarterback. You hit him with that screen, all of a sudden they have to respect that for the rest of the game that, okay, it could come and I don't want to be opposition. It's all about that read and react, right? We've talked about that. They have to be able to respect it if you go to it. So that's the game plan. It's not going to be the easiest. I don't let the stats fool you. I think the stats can really fool people on this one. They do a lot of different things. They're all about speed defensively. They say speed defense. Outside plays, I just don't think they're going to be successful. Quick hitters, quick hitters. This is going to be an awesome game, though. This is going to be fun. I just feel like the matchup here on paper is cool. But what you see from the film, this is going to be fun. I'm really curious to see how Daryl Bevel handles this. This is a big week for Daryl Bevel. It's a very big week. He's got, he's got his hands full. I'm going to say that. Thank you, Pat, for watching, and I'm out. Are you kidding me right now? I had to put my helmet on for this one. Are you kidding? Look at this. Look at all these members. What? What? Yo, hey, shout out to all the members, man. Look, look how many all pro members there are. Like, literally, it's the whole screen, dog. This is crazy. The patrons... Of course, the Hall of Fame members, man. Y'all got the gold color. It's kind of yellow, but it's supposed to be gold. Shout out to all the members, man. If you want to be a part of this, all you got to do is join the channel. But there are perks that come with it. Stay locked in the community tab if you are a member because that's where a lot of information comes out. I appreciate all of you. What?